I'm Magdalena. Uh, I'm a Django backend developer from Berlin. I work for the digital agency Moku. A challenge I meet in my everyday work is working with many projects and frequently uh, switching between them. This is why I am interested in project structure and configuration. In my talk, uh, I will talk about some tools and techniques um, how to approach this challenge. I implemented um, a sample project, Draw DevOps Against Humanity. Uh, it is based on a card game, DevOps Against Humanity. Um, in this game, you need to draw cards and create funny sentences about development and operations. All sentences, uh, phrases, and words, as well as card templates, are available in open source repository uh, in Bridget Cromhow repository under the Creative Commons license. But now, let's have a look at the Draw uh, DevOps Against Humanity rep uh, project. The project structure. I want to find things in my project easily. I don't want to dig uh, into each folder and file to find the right place to add a new function or a new test. What can we do about it? We can use a standard structure. So in case of Draw DevOps Against Humanity, we have a data folder for data, a draw folder for the main project code, and a tests uh, folder for tests. You may already know this structure because this structure is described, uh, is described by the Python packaging user guide, and it is also available in sample project repository. This repository contains, uh, along with this nice folder scaf scaffold, also a bunch of files. These are setup.py, some metadata uh, about project and configuration files. Some of these files are empty, others are already pre-filled for us. So for example, uh, setup.py already um, imports setup tools and has setup function with default arguments. Moreover, the, each of the, the default arguments has extensive um, comment, extensive documentation above, so it is easy to exchange it for the real specific for the project argument. Uh, in this talk, I will concentrate on three files that are already provided by a sample project, and we will add on the way three additional files to this collection. But first, before we jump into the configuration, let's have a look what Draw DevOps Against Humanity does. Let's draw us a sentence. We're starting from backups fails due to a cold cup of coffee. I imagine it could have happened. And now, dot git ignore. I want to have in my repository only the files that belong there. I don't want to include any auto-generated files as they can lead to bugs. What can we do about it? We can from the project start, include git ignore. Some templates for git ignore are provided by GitHub in their git ignore repository. Uh, they have their templates for over 100 languages. These templates are very elegantly structured. Uh, they are uh, ignored file are uh, structure are classified based on their origin, so it is quite transparent and easy to extend. 
you can also bear in mind uh, for especially for open source project that also uh, code editors and uh, different operating um, platforms, systems, also produce some auto-generated files. And also for these, um, gitignore repository provides templates uh, in, in their um, global folder. And now, another break. So what does DevOps Against Humanity say? It says, 90% of everything is a jar full of spaghetti. I don't know, but I like spaghetti. Set up CFG. <clears throat> Set up config is a file where we can configure our setup. We can include their information, meta, metadata about the project. And it can also serve as interface for configuring different command line tools. For example, we can configure here PyTest, Nose, Coverage, um, Flakes 8, iSort, or Sphinx. Mm. Each of these tools could be configured in each uh, own separate RC or INI file, but we can choose to have one common interface. Uh, in case of DevOps against humanity, uh, we will use setup config to configure our tests. So first, when we run our test without any configuration, PyTest will run our eight tests, and it will tell us that they pass, but we want to have something more verbose. So we add some configuration and set up config, in first part, we say which tool we want to configure it, and with adopts line, we say what should happen when we run PyTest command. So we want more verbosity, we want to allow, allow debugger, we want to have short traceback, and we want to always include PEP8 flakes and iSort plugins. Additionally, in these files, we can also configure our plugins for tests, and we can add some style configuration. For example, here we say that we want to have longer lines with 96 characters, and that we want to ignore some uh, PEP errors. So now, when we run our tests, they are indeed more verbose. Uh, a part of our eight tests, uh, PyTest run for each of our um, code file, also a test for PEP8, Flakes, and iSort, checking whether our style is correct. <clears throat> In case of some of the style checking, uh, test remembers what was the result, and if the file didn't change since the last run, the, the test is skipped. This is why some of the tests here are yellow and are marked as skipped. So now, as we configure our tests, we deserve another tweet and we can give ourselves a sentence. There was no good solution for CEOs with root access, so we built our own. Another uh, thing, editor config. I want to have a consistent style guide in the project. We already said that we can uh, in enforce our style uh, with some tests configuration. What we can do additionally, we can uh, use editor config. Editor config enables to create and maintain, maintain style guides for projects. We have there a configuration file, .editor config, and there we can put how we want our different files to look like. And 
<coughs> editor config provides also large set of plugins for different editors so they can read uh, the configuration and actually automatically um, configure it, um, our, uh, or format our files in the desire, with the desired um, style guide. Surprise, surprise. The next sentence is, I made a new editor better than Veeam and Emacs. Oh, is it possible? Oh, wait. It's called Twitter. Ne next thing I, I would like to have is I would like to my project to run under different Python versions. A tool that comes in handy here is PyEnv. PyEnv is a tool that enables uh, installing and managing different Python versions on your computer. You can configure it by setting environmental variables or also explicitly saying in .python version file which versions you need, in this case Python 3.5, uh, uh, 3.4, 2.7, with the first being the default one. And now, Hacker News is how I resolve all my merge conflicts. I don't know about you, I don't. And Apart on like, uh, running our tests, our, our uh, project in different environments, we may also want to test it under different environments and with different Python versions. And a tool that can help us here is Tox. Tox is also an example, one of the examples of tools that cannot be configured in um, setup config. It requires separate configuration file, tox.ini. And here we see uh, an easy sample um, configuration. In the first two lines, it says which environments we want to use, um, our free Python versions. And in the second part, it says what should happen in each of these environments. So we want to in each of the environments, we want to install our dependencies, which are defined in setup pi. And then, in each of these environments, we want to run pytest with coverage. So we run talks. And we expect that this beautiful picture of passing tests will appear on our screen. But unfortunately, it's not what happens we get an error, Python 3 passes, but Python 2 complains about some type error. And indeed, we dig in our code, we check what's happening, and we go and we see that one of our tests is creating in memory file, in memory CSV file, and that's a problem uh, in Python Three uh, CSV requires file open under the um, uh, string mode, but in Python 2, it requires file open under byte mode. So we quickly fix this issue and run our talks again. And now all the tests uh, are passing and talks is smiling at us. Of course, it doesn't mean that our tests, uh, that our project is 100 correct, as we already hear, uh, heard in a quite a few speeches during this conference. But at least we know that the things that we tested, that the way they work consistently uh, under all this free environment. And yay, talks just save us from uh, pushing uh, buggy code to the repository. So after this 
heavy debugging, uh, you agree that we deserve a treat and we get another sentence. Git, you are in a detached Indian Ocean state. Now it's time for our final file, make, make file. Um, make files, um, are, uh, make files are typically used in C um, with C programs, but make files can also make uh, life of Python programmers easier. And they provide a way to automatize some common um, tasks. So if I don't want to run a long command on the, or a long set of commands, I can just write make file. Here in this example, we have a make command for running tests, for running coverage, and for development installation of the project. But you can... Um, Add anything you imagine. You can clear your pick files, you can clear your build files, you can run your server. It also provides um, documentation for your project, so uh, about most typical things you, uh, you, you, can, you can do with that. So that's the make file. And the final Zero DevOps Against Humanity sentence is, to secure our next round of founding, management says we need kill minus nine. Ooh, tough one. Now, to sum up, if you are in a situation that you are dealing with many projects and you need to switch between them, there are some things that can come in handy. You can use a standard structure for your project. Uh, you can keep your repository clean and take care that any unnecessary files won't be included in the repository. You can take care of the style so the code gets more readable. You can enforce uh, you good style with uh, test configuration, which we did in setup config. And you can also provide editor config for that. Um, you can use different environments and use pyenv for that, which is configured in .python version. And you can use talks for running tests under different Python versions. Finally, you can automate uh, common tasks for the project in the make file. Uh, examples of configuration that I just show is provided in uh, my repository, Lena, Rop Lena Rotter Draw DevOps Against Humanity. And if you are in such position, and when you are happy with the structure of the project that you have, and with the configuration uh, you have, then you can, a good next uh, point where you can look at is cookie cutter. Um, cookie cutter uh, enables creation of templates that you can then duplicate into, into projects. And that's all from my side. I would like to thank uh, the developers I had pleasure to work with and some others that inspired me on my way. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Magdalena. Um, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Um, do Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, do you know website gitignore.io? 
uh, it's a perfect reference. Instead of downloading the Git ignore files, uh, uh -huh. you can just write what are you using in your project, like Python, Django, PyCharm, uh, everything, and it, will, and it will automatically automatically generate the Git ignore file for you. I think it might be worth mentioning that. Nice. So once again, I didn't know that. What's the name of the tool? GitIgnore.io. It's a website. Mm -hmm. GitIgnore.io. How does Tox find all the Python versions? Like, yeah. Tox? Could you repeat what's the question about the Tox? What does it do? Or How does it find the Python versions that are installed? Uh, uh, it works uh, together with um, um, PyEnv. So there is a Tox PyEnv plugin, plugin and um, this is how it finds the different versions. So we can use PyEnv to install uh, different versions of Python, and then Tox will be uh, mm -hmm. able to find them. Okay. Any other questions? Hello. Uh, could you go back Hello. to the Talks any you have on the slides? This yeah, one? so yeah. it's here. So um, I think it's not good if you use deps equals dot test uh -huh. because what it does is it actually installs things before installing the source package of your package, but you should actually use extras equals test. So it's supported in Talks 2.4 mm -hmm. onwards. So I'm all using extras and tests. Uh, tests is name of my extras. And here I am installing the requirements for extras that is called tests. Yeah, sure, sure. But uh -huh. talks since version 2.4 mm -hmm. has a special setting called extras for just for this. So okay. update your talk to use that. Thank you. Hi, thank you for Hello. this very informative talk that is quite useful for set up in project. Uh, I wanted uh, to ask if there is a way to condense information in less file or if uh, we should provide, for example, all the Python version in more than one source, for example, in talks and in setup CFG and in setup.py or if there is a way where I, uh, to have just one file for a global reference for everything and import those information from talks on from setup and so on. Mm -hmm. So there are different opinions among developers whether there should be a way to do that or, there, or there whether it more, it's more pretty that each tool has its own file and that depends a bit on the people who provide a tool, which ways of configuring the tool they provide. So many tools uh, enable this um, setup config configuration, so you can uh, configure it, um, provide the, the configuration of different tools in, in this one file, but there are some like talks that doesn't support it, so then you need to, to have separate file. I wanted to add one thing to, to your question. So it's not that possible to have one file because these are Python files, YAML files, uh, and sometimes TOML files. So there are some attempts to prepare something called pip file, which will be in the TOML language. Uh, but I think Python packaging authorities are uh, working on that. So I don't think we'll see that so soon. Uh, do we have any more questions? Doesn't look so. Okay. Um, thank you, Magdalena. Please. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to rate this talk in the app.